Welcome, powerful nonsensers. What's up? To another episode. Thanks for joining us. Yes. Episode 122. Very kind of you to give us your time. Yeah. 30 minutes. Just chilling out. What else could you do in 30 minutes? Well, I'm not going (laughs) to... No comment. I'm not going to go there. There's a lot you... There's definitely a lot you could do in 30 minutes. How to kill an hour. Several times over, maybe. How to kill an hour. Yeah. Yes. Except how to kill 30 minutes. Yeah. Uh, Maybe uh, Marcus Bronzy, you see? Gap in the market there, there, maybe. How to kill 15. How to kill 10. What to do in a couple of minutes. Mate, you could do a whole brand. Exactly. A whole brand. You can do like short episodes. The brand being how to kill and... Or how to kill... And then many <laughs> moments. <laughs> How to kill ducks, duck hunting. We are podcast. currently killing moments of your life, and we're very sorry for that. <laughs> anyway. But yeah, Marcus Bronzy, get on that. That's that what is I'm a good saying. podcast. How to kill an hour, Marcus Bronzy. Check it out on iTunes. Yeah. Top guy. Top, Cracks me up. Literally, guy. if you want to laugh out loud on public transport, <laughs> look like a total twat. That is the podcast to listen to. <laughs> I literally am crying to myself on the train while I'm listening to that. <laughs> <laughs> Mohammed, I'm sad. Did you hear that one? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, was yeah. fantastic. Anyway, anyway you're we welcome, are, Marcus. We, we are not hard to kill now. We no. are powerful nonsense. Hopefully, no. we'll make you laugh a bit. Probably not as much as Marcus. Well, I mean, stop sending everyone, like, saying, you basically, we've, like, we've just, we're shit. Go we've, listen to Marcus. We've just lost half our audience who said, you know what? Forget it. You guys don't make me laugh. Yeah. <laughs> and you're wasting my time still. <laughs> uh, so. Yes. Uh, this is going to be a really interesting episode, I think. I'm looking forward to this one. Hopefully. This is based on a blog post you wrote. It's always based. I know what you've done this week. When we were recording podcasts, you were like, Jem, you came up with these ideas, and I thought you chose the ideas, and now I realise you've loaded it, so actually I have to do a lot of the talking. No, 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 no. In no, it's fairness, not, it's not in about fairness. That. Go on, then. In fairness, it's not. Okay. It's just... There's no tactics behind it. The, the last one wasn't, it wasn't based on a blog post you wrote. It just oh, yeah. included something that was... Yeah. That you wrote a blog post. I think what is highlight- Whereas this one is based on. I think what's highlighted, Wayne, is that you need to write more blog posts. <sighs> anyway, I feel like I'm getting like grilled on grilled air. On- <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's do it. Shall we next next episode? Shall we do that about my blog post, the dating commodity? Shall we do that? Will that make you feel better? Will it? Will it? Would people like dating advice? From it's Ingram. not dating no, advice, just, it's me no, complaining okay. about modern yeah. day dating. It's quite an interesting topic, actually. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We'll link to that, See? and you guys can decide. See, I do write blog posts. Thank you. He earns his keep. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Anyway. So, this is about a blog post you actually didn't write for PowerfulMonsters.com. It's actually been published on two websites. Two? What was the other one? Uh, it was published on Get Albert. London. Get Albert. Oh, was, was it put on? Somebody else. No. Somebody else published it. It's on two websites. And what is it called, Wayne? Uh, uh, oh, it's called. Go on then. No, go on, you do it. <laughs> it is called uh, Why Millennials Would Rather Start a Business Than Work For You. He got it. That's pretty See, good. See, I did read it. That's good. You did read it yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I've read it several times. Thank you. Good. That's nice to hear. <laughs> You're salty today. What is going I'm on? I'm actually hungry. I haven't eaten yet today. You haven't eaten at all? No, I'm no fasted, breakfast. Pure fasted right now. Mate. It's good to fast. But we're not talking about fasting. <laughs> <laughs> so. So. Um, yes, that's the title of the episode. So the concept generally being, like, the workplace, the, the workplace as it was slash still kind of is, is not really fit for purpose for encouraging people to work. Yeah, especially the them. younger generations now, the millennials especially, which I know mm-hmm. people, like, hate the term millennial, but it's basically young people who have seen opportunities out there. mm mm-hmm. The internet is just amazing for what it can do in terms of mm-hmm. starting a business or just going out and doing something you enjoy. Right. And so I was just basically kind of reeling off. It kind of actually, the reason why I came to this blog was because like I think I got offered a job or something like that and it was like, I don't know, I forgot what it was. There was a job offer that came up and then in my mind to think about should I even look at it, mm-hmm. it's like what would it take for a employer, like I say I would never do nine to five again. Uh-huh. But in my head I thought, wait a minute, if I was to do nine to five again, what things would have to be in place for me to say, uh-huh. I'll actually consider it. Right. And so that's where the kind of idea for that blog post okay. came about. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. Which I think nowadays, well, I think after people listen to this episode, they'll probably think, like, if you are in 9 to 5, I think you actually start looking and maybe saying, yeah, why does my job yeah. not have any of these things? Yeah. And I think they're really key, especially nowadays. Uh-huh. I think a lot of people want this from a job. Uh-huh. And so we should probably kick off with yes. some of the points. Well, one of the main things, I think, and I think this is why this is now an issue... 
yeah. that needs to kind of be addressed by employers mm-hmm. is the fact that whereas 30, 40 years ago, the, you know, your best option was to go and get a job. It was the most secure choice you had, really, mm-hmm. was to just go and get a job. Somebody who's running a multi-million dollar global business um, or international business, it probably wasn't global then, um, international business, and you just go and you only keep and blah, 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 blah. Whereas now, because of the joys of the interweb... <laughs> the <laughs> um, The World Wide Web. Yeah. Um, there's... Oppor- basically... Um, you could, in theory, not oh, necessarily in practice, but in theory, you could run a global business in your gym jams. <laughs> in theory, and you can do that. In your bedroom. You can do that, yeah. Um, and there are people that, that do, although usually by the time they get to that point, they they usually have office buildings and uh-huh. that. But, but in theory, yeah. you definitely can build a global mil- multi-million dollar company from your bedroom it is possible. Or just a job where you basically earn the same salary at your job, right. but it's on your terms, basically. Precisely. Yeah. yeah. Which I is think... which is more important yeah. in this case. Because then it then becomes about, well, what's, what, is the, what is the point of going to do a nine to five if you can just do that anyway? Yeah. And which is what a lot of employers are struggling with and why uh, millennials are yeah. being viewed as entitled. It's not that they're entitled, it's just that it's not the best option available yeah, to them, so why would they do that. it? Yeah, and I think there's like so much research that's out there, I think they ask like graduates and like young people every year, what do you want to do after education? And I think like it's like way high the amount of percentage you say, I want to start my own business. Mm-hmm. And before, I didn't even know that was an option when I left school, mm-hmm. didn't know that was possible. And now people are saying, oh yeah, I want to become an entrepreneur, I want uh-huh. to start a business, or I want to start going freelance on what the service mm-hmm. I want to do. And so, yeah. Do you know what I think might have been a big... Key change. What's that? Key change. <laughs> oh! <laughs> there we go. I'm going to have to dip that in sorry. the uh, audio settings, a bit of more editing for um, me. <laughs> sorry. Um, <laughs> Just not key change. Uh, what's the phrase? Uh, turning point. Turning point. That's it. What that do? Key change. <laughs> I did an audition for a musical earlier this week. I think that oh, might have enough. something to do with it. Freudian slip. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, Any no, excuse. Turning point. <laughs> the turning point, I think, m- yeah. will have probably been, particularly as kind of young millennials are concerned, mm. is things like YouTubers and things like that. Mm. And I think the recession. Well, oh, well I th- was it you I had that conversation with where I was like, I actually think one of the biggest, when when we look back on history, one of the biggest turning points of this modern age yeah. will have been that 2008 crash. Yeah. because well, did I, I, Was it you I had that conversation with? Probably at some point. I had it with someone recently. But I think, number one, people just thought, wait a minute, I'm going to do the education, I'm going to come out, and there's no guarantee of a job, which mm-hmm. before people kind of like, if you've got a degree, you've practically got a job, and mm-hmm. then it's like, oh, crap, I've got to create something for myself. If there's no option out there for me to get a job, or it's going to take me six months or a year to find a job, which most people were saying, mm-hmm. I think young people are like, okay, there has to be an alternative option. And yeah. I think it's slowly been fizzling through people's minds to be like, you know what? Maybe I can start a business. Easy to create a website. I'm already got skills mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah, like you say, it's a real low barrier to entry, mm-hmm. which is why now young people are leaving education, mm-hmm. saying I could get a job or I could start a business. And like Gary mm-hmm. B says, you're young, just give it a go. Right. See if it can stick. If this is something that could work for you, then give it a go while you're young. You've got Absolutely. no like massive um, responsibility, mm-hmm. so you might as well give it a go anyway. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So cool. you kind of in this blog post, you kind of identified six things, six themes yes. that you think um, if em- if employers can implement these into their uh, workplaces, then actually they shouldn't have a problem hiring yeah. millennials because yeah. these are kind of the key things that millennials want out mm-hmm. of their out of their job. Yeah. Uh, so the first one. Yes. Was to care about the cause. Yeah. And I think that kind of goes back to a lot of the times we spoke about like young people or this generation. I think anybody now who's connected to the web, we've all become a lot more conscious on Mm -hmm. issues or problems in society. Mm -hmm. And I think we demand more from our lives in terms of feeling like we have a purpose. I think Mm -hmm. a lot of big companies are now like really getting involved in like how we are a business, but then how do we give back to society? Because they know that their employees are now, that's a tick point. Like, okay, Mm -hmm. yeah, I earn my salary but how am I giving back to the world or how am I, right. it's why people want everyone on Facebook is now <laughs> the next uh, politician or they're the next <laughs> bloody um, Mahatma Gandhi or whatever you want to call it. Everybody wants to be like a social 
I don't know, hero. Buddha. Yeah, but it's because people do want to, that's become a really big thing in their mindset to feel like, you know what, what I'm doing is beyond the paycheck. Mm. I do feel like I'm actually improving the world. Mm -hmm. And so I think nowadays, I think entrepreneurs are thinking, you know, if I start a business, I can build that social responsibility into it or do something that I feel is giving back rather than hope that my company maybe makes us do a fun run on the weekend to go raise a little bit of money for a charity. They want to feel like it's built into the business Mm -hmm. and the ethos, really. Well, that's why I kind of think, you know, we're seeing a rise of social enterprises happening. Mm -hmm. Um, Cheeky plug to University of Northampton who sponsored the show as well, who are a leading university in setting up social enterprises. Yes, they are. Um, but no, I think I think it's a genuine reason. Like as you say, like as a as a generation, we're becoming so much more aware of all of the problems. And you even see like the the memes and stuff. How true they are it, it is always up for debate. Yeah. But like when you see oh so and so, like when I think it was Tony Blair, uh, there was a meme going around where it's like oh um, he he has to be paid X amount to do a talk on world hunger. Mm-hmm. and like stuff like that and like the the imbalance in the world and things like that and where social issues could be solved and and where they're not being solved and where there's a window for opportunity millennials mm-hmm. are really getting on board but also just on the on the flip side as well like if you don't care about the work that you're doing as a millennial these days even if it's not for a big massive cause yeah. you're just not passionate about what you're doing you're just kind of like you're turning up you're doing your work, you're checking out, and you're like, ugh. Yeah, I think millennials are just not willing to work for work's sake anymore. <laughs> yes, I totally agree. I totally yeah. agree. Um, so the next point, yes, which I think also backs that up in a way, mm-hmm. is having a boss that cares about the cause even more than you do. Yeah, I think um, I think people are so used to having a boss that's just a bit of an arsehole or a bit kind of <laughs> autocratic. Yeah. And I think, especially as a young person, if you are a millennial, you are a young person, mm-hmm. you you are looking for someone to be a mentor, someone to guide you who's passionate to a level of something yeah. you're passionate about, and they're doing it to an extreme. And I think you want to always have someone who you can look up to. Right. And so I think to be around people like that, you want to know that, you know what, your boss believes in what you believe in. He has the same values as you. He um, respects the things you respect. And I think mm-hmm. that is now so important for like millennials going into work. If, if they are going to go into that sort of environment, they want to feel that, you know what, I'm inspired by my boss. I want to be right. like him. He's already got those things that I aspire to. He has the passion and the drive for what mm-hmm. I want to do. And I think it's so important because I think everybody needs somebody to mentor them, to kind of guide them. And so I do think that really, it's like people say, if you start a business, you go get a mentor. If you go get a job, you've got to hope that the people above you or around you are mentors to you. Yeah. And that becomes a key factor in whether you want to get that job yeah. or not. I think one of the really dangerous things uh, in the <coughs> workplace for the employers is when the millennials, or it doesn't even have to specifically be millennials, the employees mm-hmm. then actually outgrow mm-hmm. the employer. Mm-hmm. And I think it's so dangerous. To, and you see it all the time. Mm-hmm. You see people go, oh, well, my boss is not clue what they're doing mm-hmm. um because it's really simple you do this 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 and this and they just are incapable of doing it yeah. and you see that a lot and that's i think that's often a lot of the reason why a lot of people up sticks and go yeah. they're like actually i could run this better mm-hmm. and they go and set up their mm-hmm. own and i've seen a lot of like um blog posts that are like as soon as if your millennial is not enthusiastic you're doing something wrong and i mm-hmm. think that's it like we are kind of like you say whether it is our sort of attention span but we want to feel passionate and excited and buzzing Mm -hmm. a lot of the time we want to live life to the full yeah and i think that requires us to have someone else who's pushing us giving us the opportunities to kind of grow and learn Mm -hmm. i think we're gonna there's another point coming up later on the next point is it the next point it is the next point so shall we just segue that's not so casually in no let's uh (laughs) let's move in that direction so the next point is investing in personal development yeah Uh, and for the, the employer to be investing actively yeah. in the personal development of their employees. Yeah, I think, I'm sorry, I was just, just going to say, mm. I think like the old way of thinking with an employee when you hire someone is like a plug and play, like slot him in there, mm-hmm. he'll just churn that thing or she'll churn that thing mm-hmm. out. Whereas nowadays, I do think a lot of young people are saying, either like turn up and saying, where's my, where's my opportunity to grow? Where could I be mm-hmm. in three years? What kind of like, mm-hmm. I know a lot of companies now, I was actually at O2, who I do work for the other day, and they literally had a day where they were letting people go to like mindfulness classes. They were having uh, health checks. They were having like wow. all kinds of like holistic things you could do on that day. You could find out how the company are recycling. You could find out all different things because they understand that that's so yeah. important now to people. And they know that by investing in their people, that's now, as I say, it's one of those tick boxes that people say, if I work for this company, I'm hoping they do this, this, and this. Yeah. Like, they care. 
and they yeah. want to invest in their people. And I think, I think before people used to have like yearly appraisals where you have to say you've done something. It used to be really wishy washy. Mm-hmm. Like, oh well, you did do that free course that was on the weekend. That would do. That means yeah. you've grown. But now I think millennials are just like, you know what? I want to be learning a lot. Like mm-hmm. I want a lot out of this company. I want to be learning as much yeah. as possible. And I think, I, and I mean, for me, that from like because I've spoken to a few people that have worked for companies that that do stuff like that. Um, I can't remember who it was. But somebody was telling me that sometimes they'd show up to work and um, their boss would come up to them and be like, do you want to go to the theatre today? Mm-hmm. like, yeah, all right. Mm-hmm. There's some tickets. We're, there's about a group of 10 of us. We're going to go to the theatre. Mm-hmm. Come along. And they get paid to go to the, the theatre yeah, yeah, because yeah. it was an opportunity for development of some sort. I know, I think it's the Eden Project. They have loads of things like that. Like they have um, book sharing. So they go away and mm-hmm. read a book and then they'll write a review mm-hmm. and they'll publish the review on the staff website and stuff mm-hmm. like that and all sorts of things like that. And I think it really does, it, it's almost like brand loyalty for the employee yeah. rather than for the customer. Yeah, and I think companies are starting to realise that if you want a good, happy employee who's performing at their best, mm-hmm. like I think I was listening to a podcast the other day and the guy was saying that he was working with a CEO and he was like, yeah, yeah what what kind of lessons or kind of courses you're giving to your... He was like, look, we give our um, employees loads of courses to go on. Mm-hmm. And he said, yeah, but what do you do for the employee that's beyond the bottom line? Right. And the guy said, I don't do anything. And he was sort of shocked. And like wow. you said there, that person to go give someone theatre tickets or to give someone a health check or to say, you know what, just take, you've got, we're just going to give you a free holiday. Yeah. Go. Yeah. Something like that. I think now millennials are kind of like, I know who might say it's entitled, but we are expecting that there has to be growth and it doesn't have to be just sticking on a course so I can earn you more money. It's kind of right. being very holistic with how you live. And I think the other points that we're going to probably touch upon are going to kind of show some of those sort of perks, which yeah. I don't think are going to be perks anymore. They're going to be kind of like ne- 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 necessities, yeah, necessities basically yeah. Yeah. in the world of work. Okay. Well, I think that's a good point to grab a break. So Richard. we will meet you on the flip side. Yeah. See you in a sec. So we thought we'd just take a few seconds just to say thank you to our sponsor, Yep. University of Northampton. Huge thank you to them for supporting the show. Um, so, why should you check them out? Well, first of all, we're we alumni. Went we yes. went there. So everything that we kind of deliver to you kind of comes from them in a way. Um, but also, they're not just about getting a degree. The thing we love about Northampton Uni from experience is the fact that you come out of your course with your degree, but also there's so many options on the table they understand that it's not just about going out and getting a job anymore it's also about the possibility of setting up your own business and becoming an entrepreneur and to top that off (laughs) it's not just about setting up a business it's about setting up a social enterprise that's their specialist area so if you're thinking of setting up a business it can also be one that's doing good to the world and delivering social impact so check them out northampton.ac.uk and huge thank you to them for supporting the show Welcome back. We're back. So, yes, we're touching on why millennials would rather set up a business than work for you, you being an employer. You're too good at this way. It's like you're an actor or something. It's like, it's like, I don't know. It's like you remember lines and... It's like not my first rodeo. It's weird. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, so briefly, the first half we touched on uh, needing to care about the cause the boss needing to care about the cause even more, and also uh, the boss investing in personal development of their staff. Mm-hmm. So we're going to touch on three more points, which I think are really important ones. Yes. I think more so than the first three. These ones are probably the ones that keep me out of ever doing a nine-to-five. Yes. <laughs> I totally agree with you. Totally agree with you. Okay. Cool. Let's kick off. So the first one, and this is possibly my favourite. Yeah. Throwing away the clock. Yeah. The idea that everybody has to be in the office at a certain time, till a certain time. Performs at those certain times. Yeah. (laughs) And it's like, I think you mentioned in the blog post, I recall you talking about something like um, trying to fill fill the time with things to do. So it's like work for work's sake Mm -hmm. rather than based on the results. Yeah. yeah, So it being like... um, well, you've hit all your targets for today. Everything that we needed you to get done today is done. So how about you do just this thing it. that doesn't really push the needle forward at all? Yeah. But Tidy up though that bookshelf or yeah, just right. be in the office doing something. Uh-huh. Yeah. Which A, is not economically sound. Yeah. And B, is just demotivating for... Because uh-huh. 
as a as a worker, I'd be like, well, I've done everything you told me to do today. I want to go home. Or you're just going to go on the flip side and you're going to say, you know what, I'm just going to take time with all this stuff just so I can... And right. I used to do that at my job right. all day long. I knew sometimes yeah. I could get my work done in the first two hours. Yeah. But I'm like, you know what, take my just time. take my time with it. Go if get I'm a tea, really sit, in the, sit in the canteen for a bit, come yeah. back down, chat to someone, yeah. do another half hour, and you just take your time. So I think probably loads of people probably in 9 to 5 can relate to that where you're mm-hmm. kind of coasting just to get the time covered because you don't right. want your boss to go and look over and say you not got anything to do yeah right whereas I do think nowadays we kind of want to work and I think that old way of thinking about having a clock is very much treating people like a robot and saying you're, you're a cog you run we plug you in you do your uh-huh. stuff and then you're consistent because like it's like taking out the human to say oh do you know what you just you just perform when we say monkey right. Do what you have to do. Yeah. End of where I think nowadays people we know that people don't work that way. We know yeah. that people have some people are great morning people, some people yeah. are great evening people. Some people have just got completely like I'm most productive. There are two points at which I am most productive in the day. It's after after breakfast before lunch. Mm-hmm. For some reason that I'm like on it. As soon as lunch hits, my I just go <sighs> for mm-hmm. hours and I'm off the radar, really. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna get much done. I'll I can push, but not much is going to happen. And then usually at about nine, ten o'clock at night, I hit another mm-hmm. little peak. So really, it makes most sense for me to sleep in the middle of the <laughs> Get up in the morning, yeah. go back to sleep, and then get up again and work through the, through till well, late at night. I can even say, like, since I've been doing my own thing, like, I probably get so much more done in a week, but I probably work so much less because I know where my productive hours are. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what I think companies need to understand, that if you let people... And you have to trust your employee, and I think that just comes down to interviewing and finding out about the person enough. Mm-hmm. But if you trust someone, you should just say, you know what you need them to get done. You just put it in their hands, whether they want right. to do it on a Saturday morning, whether they want to not right. come in on a Monday. Maybe they want Friday half day. Like you just got to say, you know what? I know you're good enough to get this done. So long as it gets done. Just get it done. That's the important yeah. thing, right? End of. It doesn't Maybe. matter about what time you get it done, yeah. as long as it's before the deadline. And I think that's what most people hate as like anyone doing nine to five. It's like, I cannot believe that somebody tells me where I need to be. I literally have to open my eyes when they do not want to open just to be into work to say, look, I, I, I tapped in at nine o'clock. I'm in now. And mm-hmm. I think that like just is so demoralizing to uh-huh. so many people. Like, I love that the most. So I'm, I'm just like, you know what? If I don't want to get up till like 10 or 11 in the, in the morning, that's cool. I'm doing it. And I think even just this one, if people, if, if companies just, just adopted this one, one I, agree. I think you'd make a lot more happier employees. And I, I do totally think that agree. they would probably be way more motivated and probably have loads more energy, actually. Mm-hmm. Just saying, you know, I trust you. Just get the job done. You can work on your terms. Like, yeah. That means two hours here. And then you, you always hear it from people who say, oh, I've got Fridays off and they're like working from home. They do two, three hours of work and they've got the whole day done. Uh-huh. And then they're out in the afternoon they're having a go, great time. But if a, yeah. if a boss could say, you know, I trust you and that's fine, you've got your stuff done, I think yeah. it'd be so, like, then millennials think, oh, yes, I'm not to the clock. You haven't took away my right. humanity. <laughs> right, exactly. And I think to level up this, which you kind of briefly touched on, mm-hmm. I think the next point, just these two. Mm-hmm. I mean, they just throwing away the clock is, is strong enough. Yeah. But I think add this one and I think most people would be like, yeah, Sort Throw the work at me, please. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And they'd be really happy. And this one is locate getting rid of location dependence. So being location yeah. independent and just being like, look, work from home or work from the Starbucks down yeah, the road or yeah. wherever you want to work. It's going to make, we don't need you in the office. Yeah. Again, it goes, that probably goes back to the whole trust thing. It's like mm. companies don't believe that if you're not in the office, they can't visually see you. If you're not working and you're not doing the right things. Yeah. And I think nowadays, like, why would you want your your like employee to come into work, has to travel mm-hmm. on the underground at peak time? They're already coming right. to work, they're stressed and pissed off with the day, and right. now they're going to sit and they have to perform for you, whereas if they know they can get up on their own time, they can make their coffee in the morning at right. 8 o'clock from home, they can sit on the couch with a laptop, start working, mm-hmm. whatever it is, I think that is just so much more like, ah, oh, yeah. that's the way, you feel so much freedom like that, mm-hmm. like you say, if you can have You're those just two. more just generally relaxed. Yeah. Like, I think of the times I was working in the dreaded call centres, which, you know, not in itself is not a great job for, you know, <laughs> being motivated. It's quite soul-destroying. But, like, even worse, you go into a job you really despise. And I despised it. Yeah. Like, you really despise. And But to get to that hellhole, you first got to navigate the hellhole <laughs> that is King's Cross St Pancras, yeah. changing from the Piccadilly line to the Northern line at half past eight in the morning where you've got sweaty, grumpy people <laughs> who are also going through exactly the same trauma as you are, yeah. trying to push on to get to the 
onto the train. You miss three because it moves up and down the platform and you, the door's never in the same freaking place. And then you just get to work and you just think, I have just endured the gauntlet of all gauntlets. Yeah. Travelling across London just to, go to, to spend a... another seven hours in a no. building I hate. And just to get access to a phone, which you could have had access to a phone at home. <laughs> right. <laughs> but they would log, try to... log me into their, their system. system. Yeah. I'll use the, the phone attached to my computer. Yeah. Job done. Sorted, but no. But no, I have to be in an office yeah. because if I'm in an office, they can breathe down my neck. And I think, and... I think an important oh. point to say is I think companies need to, maybe if there's someone who is like a, owns a business and looks at this their way around, like if you don't have to have your staff always in the office, you are saving money in like maybe office space. Office there are a lot of yeah. good things that come from allowing your, your, um, your employees these freedoms. But I do think number one is you're just going to see a, a new level of happiness in them and in their performance because mm-hmm. they are now on their terms working when they're energised mm-hmm. and they know that the boss trusts them right. and believes in them and is happy to put it. here you go, do the work, right. I know you're going to get it done. And I just think, yeah. Think, think, yeah, I mean, just think about, just to kind of go off on a little bit of a tangent, yeah. but just think about, like, the call centres, right? Yeah. If they hire people freelance, right, rather than just employ people, A, they're going to save a shit ton of money on uh, ad- administration. Yeah. I'm not having to deal with their taxes, right? Yeah. They're also not going to have to buy any of the computer systems, no. any of the computers. They're going to need to pay for the software, but other than the physical computers, not going to have to pay for them. Yeah. The physical phones, not going to have to pay for them. Yeah. Like, basically, they have zero the costs cost because they don't have any staff in the building. Yeah. All they're paying for is the people that are on the phones. That is it. Mm-hmm. That is it. It. I have to say that I do think there is there is a change coming. I think the reason why people are saying freelancers are kind of like coming up now. I think companies are realizing this thing. Yeah, a lot of these things are. are starting to come into place. Yeah. But I mean, there's still a hell of a lot of companies that aren't willing to change yeah. with the times. Plus, they a lot of people need employees anyway. So, yeah. but I think it's kind of giving them those sort of freelancy sort of yeah. ways of living. Oh, definitely, definitely. Cool. Um, so we got one more. Yes. Which I think is also very important, and I th- I think this could be a big game changer. I think if a lot of uh, companies did this, mm-hmm. uh, which is prioritizing health and well being. Yeah, I think it's a bit of a buzz at the moment in like America, especially uh-huh. about the whole let's start making our employees sleep or have naps or yeah. have meditation, do a meditation class. Or mm-hmm. I think most companies kind of say, "Oh, look, we'll give you a gym pass," but it's right. not really. It's kind of a bit half ass. Okay, you get a free gym pass, but most yeah. people won't do it, or they don't build that sort of um like they might build the idea of kind of giving people courses to learn like those sort of physical not even physical skills those sort of mental skills but they don't kind of say you know what if our whole office were all in sports they played sports together team building Mm -hmm. they're getting healthy they're energized they feel connected to one another yeah again it's kind of looking at the whole holistic way of being rather than just saying well i have an employee i only want them for this aspect of their being if mm-hmm. you've got a healthy, energized person trying to sell your product to someone, going into a meeting looks great, posture looks great, they energize, skin looks good, all these things mm-hmm. that people do read as cues, these are going to help your business as well. Like if you've got someone who's buzzing or someone turns up and they've got big bags, they look tired, they look unhealthy, they mm-hmm. look like they hate in their life, and they're the one who's sitting trying to promote your business, like they're yeah. promoting your business. Yeah. That is your that is your billboard. Your employees are your billboard. Mm-hmm. So you want them to be buzzing for life. You want them caring about the cause. You want them looking healthy and mm-hmm. loving what they do. And you trust them. They are going to be like performing on a different level. Well, I was just about to say, if nothing else, though, like if they're healthy and they're looking after their general well being, like the productivity is going to go through the roof. Mm-hmm. Because I, it it doesn't take a genius to suss out that people that are overworked, underpaid and they have less time to look after themselves, they have less money to look after themselves, Mm -hmm. they're demotivated because they're knackered anyway, and they're demotivated because they're not earning as much as they would like. Mm -hmm. Like, it doesn't take a genius to work out that those people are going to be less productive than Mm -hmm. the people working less hours, earning as much as they would have been earning anyway, and also being, like, told, oh, yeah, just work from home, or... um, here's a free gym pass or, you know, here's a in-house gym that we've mm-hmm. set up for you. Please use mm-hmm. it. Like, it doesn't take a genius to work out that those people are going to be so much more productive. Definitely. And it's just, it's a worthwhile investment. And I think if you look at any high performers, like you look at Ariana Huffington, who's just released a new book about sleep and that's a well-being thing. That is making sure that people mm-hmm. get enough sleep. I know from some of the people who are high up in um, O2, 
they're in great health. They're like the older people, but they look so healthy. Look at people that my personal training clients I work with. People are in the gym looking after themselves or who are high performers, own their own businesses. Mm -hmm. They look great. These people are really like mm -hmm. value their health and well-being and yeah. their sleeping and looking good and eating good. Yeah. And so I do think, yeah, it's such an important thing. And I think all of this kind of ties into what I think most people want from a job. Mm -hmm. But most companies, like you say, it is happening. It's trickling in slowly, mm -hmm. but maybe not quick enough. And then, like you say, if there's the opportunity for people, millennials, to start their own businesses yeah. where they can build these kind of things in from the start, then it's kind of like a no-brainer, really. And is the reason why that's why I would not work for someone until yeah. maybe they apply a lot of these sort of philosophies, really. Oh, definitely. And I think the one question you have to ask yourself, really, is you know, how much, if you have got a day job still, how much is your day job doing any of this stuff? And if it's not doing any of it at all, yeah. then I'd probably say you're already a little bit unhappy anyway. But yeah. just reassess your position in your job. See if you can negotiate some of this stuff. You might yeah. not be able to, but if you can, go for it. I, I think, think that's an important point as well. Like If you're willing to negotiate, if you're willing to sit down with your boss and say, you know what, look, I have been performing for this long. Mm -hmm. You can see I get the work done. I would like to have Fridays from home or I would like to be able to come in a bit later so I can miss the rush of people in the morning because mm -hmm. it really did motivates me. They might actually start respecting you 10 times more because you know you you know how you work, you you know yourself mm -hmm. and you're willing to just ask and say, you know what, I think this is what will work for us. Or yeah. I want to, can we start doing a meditation class in the afternoons? I've found someone who's really good, they'll come in. And I think if anything, it's going to make you look great and the more you can kind of show your boss that you are really invested in everybody health, everybody's health and well-being in the organisation, yeah they're going to look at you in a whole different light. Yeah. And I think you owe, you owe it to yourself, really, to make sure that you're happy in what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Like, you just don't want to be knackered, tired out, burnt out, hating your job. Like, 80% of your life, you're at work. <laughs> right. yeah. And if you hate it, then eight, you hate 80% of your life. Yeah. And that just sucks. That's no way of living. And yeah. if you are a millennial as well, you've got a lot of life to live. So You will. Yeah, that's true as well. Mm -hmm. true. Cool. I think that's a good, great place to wrap up. So, thanks yes. very much for listening. Yes. Uh, as always... Any links to anything that we've mentioned, obviously the original blog posts will probably link up on to there as well. Powerfulnonsense.com forward slash 122 for episode 122. Um, and also, if you're watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up. And if you're listening on iTunes, please subscribe if you haven't already and leave us a nice five-star review We'd to help that. get the word out about the show. Do you know what? I think 122, 22 is going out on the 22nd, is it? Which is my birthday. Yeah. Are you seconds. actually here for your birthday? No. I'm in Slovenia. Oh. Yay. That's good, because I'm not here for your birthday. Either. I know, but I'm I think you're going to go out on the 6th. But... On the 6th? Of oh, August. Okay. You going to be back? Yeah, I think so. Good. <laughs> anyway, uh, now that we're done talking the logistics of your birthday, Gem, yes. uh, we'll wrap up there. Priorities, right? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, thanks for listening, guys, and we'll catch you next time. See you later.